Hi, and welcome back to Inspired the Game. I'm Sean. And I'm Lola. If you enjoy what you see here, please support our channel by subscribing down below. And if you've already subscribed, thank you very much. Now you can check it off your to-do list. <laughs> Today we are talking about Bot Factory. Bot Factory is a one to four player game, runs about 30 to 60 minutes, and it's fairly lightweight. The mechanics involved are uh, variable player order, tile placement, worker placement, and open drafting. And I do want to put a caveat on that. I say it's fairly lightweight for a Lacerda game. <laughs> so to begin with, before we get into our review, we're going to show you a quick overview of how to play it. Bot Factory is a worker placement game about building robots in a factory. There are various boards that you can go to for locations. First one I'll talk about is the projects board. Here there are two locations. You can choose one or the other and take a projects tile. There is also the option down here to give up two projects tiles to get a universal part. If you go to this board here, this is the part production board. You can use movements to extract tiles from the hopper wheel as well as move the hopper wheel to extract more tiles. These tiles you get and then can use once you get to the next board, the assembly board. Here you get the opportunity to place down robot tiles. If you have placed down the third and final tile in a robot type, you get to take the corresponding robot meeple. Now you can only do this if you happen to have one of the project tiles corresponding to that robot already. The final location is the finance board. You can go to this location to do two things. You can use your uh, conversation tokens to claim a contract, getting more points for if you complete that contract, as well you can use them to increase the value of whatever robot you want to increase. And in a nutshell, that's how you play Bot Factory. So Bot Factory is a simplified version of of Kanban EV, or it's based off of it. It plays like a very typical Asserta, um, but it's simple and it's easy to get into and it plays much quicker because of that. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I really enjoy about it is that variable player order. So as you're placing your workers, where you place them determines where when they're going to move in the next round, which provides for some additional strategy to think about because if you're gonna be the one that gets to choose first next time, that's a great benefit. Whereas if you're going to be the last one to choose, that's gonna be a bit of a detriment to you. So you're always needing to plan ahead at what your next turn is going to be or your next few turns and where you're wanting to go mm -hmm. and that was something very very important to keep a, a track of because if you forget uh, to track where Sandra is going to move next turn you could end up getting out of phase of where you want to be and where she is and suddenly you can't take the turn that you wanted yeah, so we didn't talk quite yet about Sandra. So Sandra is your supervisor overlooking things and she rotates regularly on the board. Now in a two player game, you cannot go to the spot where Sandra is. So that limits each turn where you can move. You always have to move from your current location, your current board to a different board each turn. So four boards, you can't reuse the one that you've just been on. So that brings it down to three boards. If Sandra's on a different board, that means you have usually only two boards open to you at each turn. Now you want to make sure that those two are going to be something that's going to be useful for you in that round because if you get far behind in making your bots because you've been out of phase with what you need to do that can have a serious detriment with how your game plays out. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the things I really like about this game too is the variable scoring mechanism of your bots. So there isn't some fixed value of each of the different colors. They're all varied based on what you invest into them. So you can spend some of your speaking uh, tokens to go over and push up the value of your corresponding bots, what you have the most of. Um, now, if one thing of note, each time one whole bot of that color is made, that worth is brought down one notch as well. Mm -hmm. So you want to compensate that to push that up because it can make a huge difference in your end game if your bots are worth more than the other bots. 
I like how it really plays like a Lacerda game because I really enjoy the mechanisms of the Lacerda games. I like the way his mind thinks. I like the way he designs his games. And what is really great about Bot Factory is you get the same construct, but within a simplified version, which makes it for an a quicker, easier play. Um, this is a game that anybody can play. You can teach it to pretty much anybody. Um, it says the box says 30 to 60 minutes. I think it's at least 60 minutes, um, but it is around 60 minutes for each of the plays that we've had. So I prefer his heavier games, hands down. Um, because they are heavier, there's more strategy to it. It means that really it comes down to there's a less of a luck component. There's a lot more you get to think about. And I like that. I love that. However, you need three hours to play one of the heavier Lacerda games and you don't always have that. So even though they're some of my favorite games, they don't make it to the table a lot. So one of these more simpler versions is a way to get it to the table on any weeknight at any time. You can just pull it out. You can get it played more. And I do like that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've really enjoyed about the Lacerda games that we've gotten from Eagle Griffin is the organization. There's always a great insert in there that keeps everything exactly where it needs to be. There's usually a lid that goes over top of it. So when you, if you store uh, vertically like we do, things don't fall out and end up all over the place. And you know, Bot Factory was another one that once you get it all together, it fits on the shelf perfectly. Yeah. And the art is, is sweet. The <laughs> illustrations of it, the quality of the components is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I really love the turning mechanism of the hopper and pulling out the different um, robot parts and then building them on the assembly line. It has a real tactile sense to it. And it's it's fun. It's a fun theme. And I really, really like that. Mm -hmm. Take note, there is no mixing and matching of the different colors or the different types of parts in this game. Because at first, that's kind of what I was expecting. But it's just straight. You're making the red ones. You're making the yellows, greens, or reds. Um, did I say red twice? <laughs> I might have. <laughs> um, so it's just straightforward like that. It is light game. So if you're used to um, Vital Lacerda's heavier games, this is quite light in comparison. But it is one that I think will make it to the table quite a lot for us. Yep, yeah. for sure. So if you're interested in this game, check it out. I think it is well worth it if you like a good worker placement. And if you enjoy tile placement, variable player order, as well as open drafting, it's got all those things. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching our video today. Check out some of our other videos, and as always, happy, happy gaming, gaming, folks. folks.